Many people have different opinions about who Jesus is. What do you believe about Jesus Christ? In this video, I will be comparing what some individuals and religions think. I'll be comparing it to what the Bible says about Jesus. Hello, this is Williams, the young man whom Jesus loves and the faithful witness for Christ. Welcome to Grace Tidings, the platform for evangelism and discipleship. I want to invite you to check out my website for more details on this topic. The link will be on your screen and also in the description section of this video. The Bible tells us exactly who Jesus Christ is. He is God, our Lord and Savior. He died for our sins and he rose again for our justification. And we can get to God only through him. Had everyone believed the Bible, this would have been an easy case to settle. Because the point is quite clear in the Bible. But not only do some people not believe the Bible, they also seem to have ideas or opinions that are contrary to what the Bible teaches. For instance, some people believe that Jesus Christ was a good teacher who taught good morals. That is true. But many of these people will not agree that Jesus Christ died for their sins. Some believe that Jesus lived and died. That is also true. But they also conclude that he wasn't born of the virgin. He did not die for their sins. And he did not rise from the dead. And then there are others who don't really care about any of this. They're just looking for the Jesus that will give them all the worldly possessions that they so much crave. Who is Jesus to you? I want to inform or remind you that what you believe about Jesus Christ matters a lot. And you will soon see why. Now, let me share with you what some major religions believe and teach about Jesus today. I got some of the things that I will share in this section from a pamphlet that I read some time ago titled Christianity, Cults, and Religions. Let me begin with Islam. According to the religion, Jesus, known to them as Isa, was not God or the Son of God. His virgin birth is likened to Adam's creation. He was sinless, they believe, a worker of miracle, and one of the most respected prophets sent by Allah. He was not crucified, according to them, or resurrected. He, not Muhammad, will return to play a special role before the future judgment, perhaps turning Christians to Islam. Hmm. What about Hinduism? According to them, Jesus Christ is a teacher a guru or an avatar. He is a son of God as others. They believe his death does not atone for sins and he did not rise from the dead. That's very wrong. Next on the list is the Jehovah's Witnesses. They also teach that Jesus is not God. Before he lived on earth, he was Michael the Archangel. They believe Jehovah made the universe through him and on earth he was a man who lived a perfect life. And after dying on a stake, they don't believe he died on the cross. He was resurrected as a spirit. Keep that in mind because I'll be coming back to it. His body, according to them, was destroyed. Jesus is not coming again as far as they are concerned. He returned invisibly in 1914 in spirit and very soon they believe he and the angels will destroy all the non-jehovah's witnesses and then we have the mormons mormonism teaches that jesus is a separate god from the father he was created as a spirit child by the father and mother in heaven and he is the elder brother of all men and spirit beings, including Lucifer, as far as they are concerned. His body was created through sexual union between Elohim and Mary. Jesus was married. Hmm. I wonder where they get that from. 
His death on the cross does not provide full atonement for our sins, but does provide everyone with resurrection. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Obviously, none of this describes the correct person, nature, and ministry of Jesus Christ. So let me ask you, to which side of this do you lean in your beliefs about Jesus Christ? I have on my website a longer list of the positions of other major religions about Jesus Christ. I won't be able to cover them all in this video, but you're welcome to read about them when you get a chance. In addition to what the non-Christian religions believe about Jesus Christ, there are those within the Christian circle who also have the wrong views of Jesus Christ. For instance, some believe or are made to believe that when they come to Jesus, that Jesus will solve all their problems. He will remove poverty from their lives and heal them of all their diseases. That's what they believe. That's the reason why some people go to church. But they have created another Jesus in their minds that they serve with those expectations. That's not the Jesus of the Bible because the biblical Jesus came to solve a bigger problem. A bigger problem than the difficulties of this life. He came to give us something bigger than the earthly gains or a moment of respite for which many are searching. And if you stick with me, I will cover them in details. Now let me share with you what the Bible says about Jesus Christ. You will be able to compare with whatever you currently believe and then make an informed decision. And the first thing that I will tell you is that the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ is God who came as a man. In other words, during his earthly life and ministry, Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. He did not and has never ceased to be God. You have to rip off a great portion of your Bible to teach contrary to that. Jesus Christ is the second person of the Trinity. He is God, the Son, and also the Son of God. If that confuses you now, it is okay. No human being can tell you that he or she fully understands the Trinity. It is truly beyond our human comprehension. But don't worry, it gets clearer with time. He has always existed. Jesus has always existed with the Father and was never created. Rather than being created, the Bible says that everything was created by him and everything is subject to to him. He does not have a beginning because he has always existed from eternity past. The part of the Bible where I like to go on this point is the Gospel of John chapter 1 where the identity of Jesus is revealed among many other scriptures. Of course, we are told in the first three verses of that chapter that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Maybe you are listening now and you are still not convinced. You are wondering, where does it say Jesus Christ in that passage? Well, how about we take a look at verse 14 of the same chapter. The verse says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. If at this point you still don't believe that was Jesus Christ, it simply means that you don't believe the Bible yet. Jesus Christ is one with God. The Trinity describes the concept of one true God who is capable of functioning in three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are not three separate gods. Jesus himself tells us that him and his Father are one. It is unbiblical to say or teach that Jesus Christ is separate from God the Father, and if he is not separate, then he is God. I provided more details on this point on my website. But as a final note 
for this section, let me remind you that the one offense for which Jesus was condemned by the Jewish leaders was claiming to be God. I don't have all the time to go into the details, but we know that when they got to Pilate, when they took Jesus to Pilate, they changed the story. They brought instead a political offense against Jesus, something that they knew that Pilate would care about. But we know that in their Jewish hearing, Jesus was condemned for the blasphemy of claiming to be God. But it wasn't a blasphemy because Jesus is exactly who he claims to be. The second thing the Bible tells us about Jesus Christ is that he is the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah about whom the Old Testament prophets prophesied. For those who still struggle to believe that he is the Messiah, listen to this question that Jesus asked his disciples and the answer that they provided and how Jesus reacted to it. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 15. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. The summary of that, Peter identifies Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah. And Jesus says, You are absolutely right. Plus, Jesus personally identified himself as the Messiah during his conversation with the Samaritan woman by the well. John chapter 4, verse 25, The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah has cometh, which is called Christ. And when he is come, he will tell us all things. And then comes the wonderful moment. Jesus responds in verse 26 and said, I that speak unto thee, I am he. <laughs> the anointed Savior is the title of Jesus. The word is Messiah in Hebrew and Christ or Christos in Greek. It undeniably refers to the one whose earthly name is Jesus, as revealed by the angel of God. There is no arguing the truth that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. And this is one of the most important things that God wants us to know about Jesus Christ. That is, the fact that he is the Christ, which is why we call him Jesus Christ. It is so important that the Apostle John writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that his entire gospel was written so that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, that is, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, and that believing it will give you life, will give me life through his name. Think about that for a moment. The Bible considers liars, those who deny that Jesus is the Messiah. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist or antichrist, depending on which tongue you speak, that denieth the Father and the Son. Another thing that the Bible tells us about Jesus Christ is his incarnation. And this is the process by which Jesus was miraculously conceived in the womb of Mary. Remember, no man played any role in that conception. He was conceived through the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. This was prophesied some 700 years before it actually occurred. And during his earthly ministry, Jesus functioned as fully God and fully man. If you happen to have questions about that, leave them in the comment section. Jesus had to become a man and live blameless in order to serve as the mediator between God and man. In the scriptures, he is referred to as the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God, 
and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. This verse literally says Jesus is God, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. That was God on the cross 2,000 years ago, reconciling the world unto himself. Now, let's talk about why he came to this world. Why did Jesus come? The short answer to that question is that Jesus Christ came to save the world. To save the world from what? From sicknesses like cancers, migraines, or viruses? No. Did Jesus come to save us from poverty, famine, or homelessness? Absolutely not. He came to solve a bigger problem, the problem of our separation from God. So he came to reconcile us to God. We began to see the purpose of Christ's coming from what was prophesied about him even prior to his arrival. Take a look at uh, Isaiah 53, for instance, when you get a chance. While Jesus was conceived, an angel visited Joseph, who was about to marry Mary, and told him exactly why Jesus will be born. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The man that God used to introduce Jesus Christ to the world, John the Baptist, refers to Jesus as the Lamb of God. And this statement has the Old Testament sin offerings in view. The lambs were sacrificed as atonement temporarily for the sins of the people. In the case of Jesus Christ, he was the sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, including the remission of the sins that are past. Hence, John the Baptist referred to him as the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Plus, listen to the testimony of Jesus Christ himself. Luke chapter 19 verse 10, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. John chapter 3 verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The Apostle Paul makes clear the question about why Jesus came. And this is what he writes, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that is, worthy to be embraced or believed, worthy to be received with thankfulness, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. So what exactly did Jesus do to accomplish this purpose of saving us? The Bible tells us that he lived and died for our sins. He lived a perfectly righteous life by which he fulfilled the laws of God on our behalf. He suffered and died. He died that painful death on the cross. His death on the cross was him offering up himself as an atonement for the sins of the whole world. If anybody or any religion tells you anything contrary to that, they are deceiving you. Those who crucified him were completely ignorant of the fact that they were fulfilling God's purpose. To them, they thought they got him and that they got the last laugh. Little did they know that they were mere tools in the hands of an all-powerful God, the master planner. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that if they had understood the mystery of the cross, they would not have crucified Christ. Thank God they didn't know. The part of this story that is difficult for many to believe is the fact that Christ died for their sins. He truly died on the cross as a sacrifice and full payment for the sins of the whole world. His death on the cross provides full atonement for all sins. Anyone who believes in him will benefit from that sacrifice. Don't take my word for it. 
Go and read Isaiah 53 yourself, one of the many passages in the Bible on this topic. But in addition to that, let me read this from uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. Verse 8, But God commendeth, that is, demonstrated his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For he, God, hath made him, Christ, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The story, however, did not end with the death of Jesus. He was buried and he rose from the dead. What a powerful savior we have. This is something that Christ himself talked about with his disciples many times. But prior to the cross, they did not get the point. Even when the news of Christ's resurrection broke, they were still wondering what happened. It is simple. Christ died. He was buried and he rose again from the dead the third day, just like he said. Although this was not clearly understood prior to his death, it shouldn't be a mystery to us today since the truth has already been revealed. The Apostle Paul declares the gospel in one of his epistles to the churches, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verse 3, he says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That is the simple message of the gospel, that Christ died for our sins, for yours and for mine. He was buried, and he rose again the third day bodily. That is crucial because Jesus did not resurrect as a spirit, as some claim and teach today. He resurrected bodily. Later in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul provides a detailed account and proof of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In addition to the individuals to whom Christ appeared personally after his resurrection, there were over 500 witnesses to the resurrection at one time. This, as the preacher said, is more than enough to convince a jury. Those who refuse to believe this plain message are those who still have their minds blinded by the God of this world, the devil. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. What else does the Bible tell us about Jesus Christ? The Bible says that he ascended to heaven. Christ returned to heaven after completing his atoning works. All is now done. Mission complete. It is finished. Luke chapter 24 verse 50. And he led them out as far as to Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them. That means he was taken away from them, carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and there are of course more references on this but the last thing that i want to mention in this section is the fact that jesus will return yes jesus christ is coming back again and i'm focusing now on the final return of what is called the revelation the second coming of 
Christ will occur in two phases. Phase one, he comes for the Christians. We call that the rapture. This will be followed by the tribulation period, which the Bible predicts will last for seven years. And at the end of the tribulation, Jesus will return with his angels and his saints. And this time, he's coming as a righteous judge to judge the world, to rule and to reign. Now, let me show you what happened when Jesus ascended to heaven. Acts chapter 1 verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. We believe those two men to be angels. Who also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I provided more references on this on my website as well. Now, if you have listened to this point, it tells me that you have some interest in this topic. So I want to ask you this question. Do you fully believe in the biblical Jesus? If not, it means that you have rejected the only way of salvation and following your own way. But what if you are wrong? Are you willing to take that chance with your eternity? But if you believe in Jesus as described in the Bible, here is a follow-up question for you. How would you respond to him? All that I've shared about Jesus today calls for your response, especially when he is the only way to God. Your response to Jesus and his completed work will determine the life that you live now and the life you live in eternity. If you have never repented and believed in Jesus Christ, I suggest that you humble yourself before your Creator and put your trust in Him. This is not hard to do. Simply admit your sins. Believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose again. This is what it means to believe in Jesus Christ. Put your trust, your faith in the blood that he shed for your sins and you will be saved. And if you've already received Christ, I encourage you to give your life to serve him and make him known to the world around you. This is by far the most rewarding effort. If you've been blessed by this video, please like and share it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, grace and peace be with you.